Hello guys, welcome to a rainy day in Old Hickory, Tennessee, or Nashville as some of y'all call it. Uh, we are out here planting tomatoes today, and I wanted to bring you guys along with me as I did this. This is in our no-dig beds that we started back in the beginning of our video series. You can see these plants here getting ready to go out, all lined up. We're going to be using a trellising method that M.I. Gardner talks about on his YouTube channel. I just ordered the elastic, or I think he called it not nylon, nylon string, and it's a little bit stretchy, so it doesn't saw through the plants. It allows it to kind of blow around a little bit, but this stake is a two by eight furring strip, and they're relatively inexpensive. I got mine at Home Depot for $1.89, and this is in the middle of the pandemic, so uh, you know lumber prices were crazy. So they were relatively inexpensive anyway. Uh, they are eight feet tall, two inches wide, and one inch thick. And I just took a stick and kind of started the hole, and then I took the big uh, furring strip and shoved it down in the ground, and it went straight in. I just put one in to see uh, how it was gonna be to get them in. I was a little bit worried about it, but they went in just fine. If your ground is wet, like mine, uh, then you should have no issue. If it's been a little bit dry, you might have to, I don't know, get a rubber mallet or something to get them in there. But yeah, today we're gonna be planting tomato plants and we're gonna get into the video. All right, guys, first thing I wanna talk about is, again, our no-dig beds. These are uh, spent mushroom compost directly on top of cardboard and directly on top of grass. The cardboard has killed off most of the grass. I have weeded this bed before this video. You can see over here where I haven't weeded what it kind of looked like before. Uh, we had some construction as we put in this patio and you can see like anywhere that the cardboard might have ripped, uh, there's weeds growing. So the cardboard method does work. It's just a matter of, you know, making sure that you stay off of it long enough for it to uh, do its job. So we will be planting these in about, you can actually see a side cut here where we had to cut in from the patio. There's really a, probably about Oh, I don't know, three and a half, four inches of compost on top of the cardboard. This cardboard's folded down here, but you can see that's where it stops, right there. And uh, below that is just earth and grass and dead roots and stuff. Um, so yeah, planting in about three to four inches of spent mushroom compost. I haven't amended anything. And the reason I haven't amended anything is everything's growing just great. We have our onions over here. Our carrots are all germinating, a second sowing of those. This lettuce is getting ready to come out as this cut and come again bed fills in. Uh, we've got some red acre cabbage here. Again, this whole area was destroyed and needs to be weeded uh, from the patio installation. But we are talking about tomatoes today and you will see throughout the video here, I do have some uh, red cherry radish, some French breakfast radish, and some Detroit red beets that are germinating, coming up nicely. They'll come out soon, but I decided to go with this method of trellising, like I said, based on M.I. Gardner's channel. Um, there were a bunch of different options. I almost went with, I believe it's Josh, Josh Sat, Satin, 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 I'm not sure. Um, his trellising method, he has a video called A Trellis to Make You Jealous. It is a great video. You could go check that out if you're growing more tomatoes than me. I think that might be a great option. Uh, he basically uses T-posts and electrical conduit to create a long trellis that can just go on and on and on. You can keep tying more electrical conduit in. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, for this bed, almost 20 foot long, it would, would have cost me around $50 to do that. I thought that was pretty reasonable. However, uh, I did decide to go with this method for multiple reasons, but this is also significantly cheaper. You can see there are nine, uh, I stuck sticks where I'm gonna plant my tomatoes. Just measured them out with a yardstick so I could have good measuring. Um, they're 24 inches apart, so I have nine tomatoes across there. And ultimately, I think this method is going to be great because the stake itself isn't all about support. These tomatoes have great root systems. Uh, they're very healthy plants. They're gonna be planted really deep all the way up to about here. So they're going to be way down in the ground, a foot and a half or so down in the ground on some of them, maybe two feet on the brandy wines. They're really tall. And um, so they're going to develop a really strong root system. So it's not necessarily how strong your trellis is. It's more about your root system. The trellis is more there to support the branches and the leaves and the fruit as it goes up and just keep it from falling over and vining on the ground. We will be hard pruning our tomatoes throughout the season. 
which means we will be removing suckers as we see them and we will be pruning all the leaves up the bottom of the plant to about a foot and a half to two feet up uh, so that there is plenty of room to breathe across this bed. I was gonna go with a little bit closer spacing, but I figured this is my first year growing. I don't wanna risk blight. So I'm going to go ahead and give those the proper 24 inch spacing across. We will be hard pruning these and we will be tying them up to these posts uh, every foot or so as they grow with that nylon stretchy string. You can find it on Amazon. If I think about it, I'll put a link in the bio, but more importantly, you should go support MI Gardener and buy the string off of his website. Um, they've come up with their own little more UV resistant blend, I believe, so go check that out. But for right now, we're getting ready to get started, so I'm gonna dig us a hole and we're gonna plant our first tomato. I guess I should tell you what varieties we have here first. We have, this is a red cherry tomato, another red cherry tomato. I love them, I know that I'm gonna eat them off the vine. They probably won't even make it in the house. Um, so I wanted to get a couple of those in there. And I might add, this side of the garden, right up to about, mm, here gets probably an hour or so less sun um, because as it kind of goes down those top limbs up there start to cast shadow back here and um, so it gets a little bit less sun so I decided to go with my smaller varieties my cherry tomatoes my Roma tomato my San Marzano plum which I did a little bit of research they said that these should be totally fine with the six hours of sunlight that they get these should get a little bit closer to seven, almost eight hours of sunlight, which would be good. And this is a Ponderosa Red. I'm not extremely happy with how this kind of exploded and grew up. It wasn't, it wasn't leggy for light's sake because uh, the lights were right on top of it pretty much its entire life. But it just is kind of a flimsy, flimsy vine. So uh, I had to stake those with what I had. I had some painter's tape and some sticks out of the yard, stuck them down on the side. You know, you work with what you got on hand when uh, you're in a dire situation. These things are blowing all over the place, um, but they're healthy. So we'll plant that guy really deep and he should grow up even stronger. Ponderosa Red. This is a home save variety I've talked about in my previous videos. My dad procured for me, got a couple seeds from a friend back in Ozark, Missouri. There's a river that runs through Ozark called the Finley River. And this man's family has been growing this tomato for many years. I don't think it's a recognized heirloom per se, um, but he calls it a Finley River heirloom tomato. I believe it is a close cousin to the uh, Stein heirloom or the Arkansas Walker. I can never figure that one out, but yeah, it's one of those two. So I'm testing those out this year, mainly because we only had six seeds. I got six plants to grow. So I'm hoping that I can at least get some fruit off of these to save seed for the next time so I don't feel as pressed. Uh, so we'll see how those come along this season. This right here is an interesting little thing. So this is a Brandywine tomato, Brandywine red tomato. You can see it has the potato leaves on it, these longer leaves as opposed to these like standard leaves. So this is a Brandywine red. Out of the same packet, a high quality packet, I might add, seeds of exchange, organics, non-GMO, all these seeds are that way. They're not all from there, but they're all organic, non-GMO. But out of the same packet, a standard leaf variety, Brandywine. I did a little bit of research and supposedly that's not all that uncommon for Brandywine tomatoes. So again, these are both heirlooms. I'm gonna save seeds from both of these and we'll see if these put out all standard leaf seeds next year and if these put out all potato leaves next year and we'll just know that it was seeds of change that messed up and, and not a just a genetic fluke but we will see so we'll get those planted and then i wanted to put another finley down here on the end i'm kind of separating those out from each other because obviously they're the same species same uh genetics so if one were to get sick i want it to be a little bit farther away than the other just in case um so yeah we're gonna ready to get planted i hope you all enjoy the rest of the video i'm gonna go dig us a hole all right guys as i get started here we are going to be using a little bit of Job's Organics vegetable and tomato fertilizer. I don't have any real specific reasons I chose this other than it's not super high in nitrogen. It is a 253 NPNK. Um, so these plants have had plenty of nitrogen. Uh, only a week ago they were fertilized in their pots with fish emulsion. Uh, so they should be good to grow on with that. And uh, what little they get in here, what's in the compost in the ground below. Uh, I am going to add a little bit. I tried to do a lot of research on if you needed to add fertilizer when doing no dig. 
since my tomatoes are going way deep into the ground, into this regular gross soil, it's not great, it's just lawn soil and who knows what's in it, I figured that it'd be probably good to put some fertilizer down there. So we're gonna add two or three tablespoons of this with each plant. Uh, and then the other thing we're going to do is we are going to prune each of these leaves off the bottom so we can get up to where we're gonna plant. Now on this particular plant, I'm going to prune this one, this one, and this one to make sure I can see what I'm doing here. Just so you know, I'm gonna prune this one, this one, and this one uh, so that I can plant it up to here. Uh, and as you see these little hairs growing off here, of course, these are going to become roots uh, underneath the ground. Not all plants do this, so you need to be careful about what kind of plants you plant this deep, but this is an example of one that you can plant a little bit deeper. So to do that, I just wanted to show you, I have some really sharp little Fisker pruners here. You're going to get right up against that. Just give a little snip. Same here and up here. And that's it. And then we'll plant it. So let me get this hole dug. All right. So I've got this hole dug finally. And uh, it's significantly deep. I'm gonna take my plant in the pot here and put it down in there. You can see my soil level it's gonna be right about there. So just about an inch below that next node, which is good. Gives that leaf a little bit of room to stay up off top of the soil. So down in there, if you see here, there is kind of this clay, mud kind of soil underneath the node dig. You can kind of see here where it starts and ends. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tablespoon or two of this organic fertilizer. Let me get my phone all muddy here so y'all can see. This Job's Vegetable Organic Fertilizer. It's gonna take us a handful. We'll sprinkle it down there around the sides let it get down in there just sprinkle it in there and then put you back on here we're going to put this plant in the ground we're gonna take it like this upside down squeeze the pot you see it's a little bit root bound in there so we're just gonna tease those a little bit we want it to just be a little more loose, a little easier to move around. Don't want to shock it too much. So just kind of tease it around a little bit. So then we're going to take that root ball. We're going to stick that straight down there in the bottom. A little push. It's okay for that fertilizer to be in direct contact with those roots. I'm going to take this soil first. Just kind of sprinkle it in there around it. And backfill. Backfill. And then a little bit more of that. Put it in there. And then I'm gonna fill in with this nice loose compost. Get that around there. Really could have probably gone in a little bit further, but it's okay. It's gonna be good. So, this is a trick that I learned from Jess over at Roots and Refuge Farm. You want to kind of not really build a mound, but you want to plant up just a little bit around the plant here, give it a little bit of support. And more importantly, you want to make sure that you're not um, putting it in a low spot so that it ends up uh, drowning the plant. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make you a little bit of a, a moat around it so that this can run off on the sides. Of course, we'll come back and mulch when I have some mulch, I don't have any right now, but come back and that way, the water will run out this way, five or six inches, and that will go straight down instead of it all being right here on the plant it'll encourage the roots to grow out. So yeah, long story short, that is how I'll be planting this tomato. When it gets a little bit taller, I'll go in and I'll stake it up here. And then we'll be off and running. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you wanna watch more content like this. We're in the Nashville area, zone 7B, but everybody's planting right now. So uh, join, join us for the journey on how our no dig garden goes. We appreciate you guys watching. Have a nice day.